Chapter 9, The Stakeout. Ooh, look, they have a mover poster of me. Must be big Nuktuk fans. Those are wanted posters. For what? What did he do? Wanted by Her Majesty the Earth Queen. Oh, right. The Queen. Guys? I mean, good luck trying to get that bounty. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> okay, don't know what it means, but it looks cool. Where is everyone? And good morning to you too. Uh oh. Man. Now don't get mad, Chorus. Fine. Whenever someone says don't get mad, it means it's time to get mad. <laughs> I thought we were on the same page about this. We all did. Naga found something. Oh, sorry, I forgot to bring treats. <laughs> oh no, poor Naga. She's had such bad treatment this season. <laughs> this must be Iway's Jeep. He can't be far. Cute spirits. I told him I had the best drinks in the Earth Kingdom and he called me a liar. That's him. Any idea where he is now? Nah, afraid not. But he was right. My drinks are terrible. Aw, oh, don't know why I feel so much sympathy for this random bartender. I'm just frustrated. What does he here want with me? What's his plan? Jaibao's Grove, Sundown. This must be where and when Ai Wei is going to meet Zaheer. I think there might be a couple bounty hunters over there who recognize me. We've been made. Maybe you should take off those bright yellow ponchos. We should head back to Core before someone else recognizes us. <gasps> there he is! Or we could follow Ai Wei instead. I'll go get Korra. But if he's staying here, where are Korra and Asami going? I feel like they're walking into something else. I say we stake out his room, and when he leaves for this meeting, we follow him. One thing I thought about later with Ai Wei is that I didn't realize how far Zaheer's sphere of influence carried. Like, you know he's a notorious criminal, but for him to have Ai Wei as a contact, an ally, I guess there's some kind of larger movement going on that they're all part of? Forget it. Last time a bunch of teenagers came in here, they trashed the whole room. We found you! Oh no, you're gonna blow your cover. Hey, no bending in here! <laughs> Take it outside! Whoa, 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 whoa. We're not here to fight you. We're here to beat Nuck Tuck. <laughs> oh no! That's hilarious. We're your biggest fans. I mean, Nuck Tuck's pretty awesome. Make it out to Lily and Macau. Uh, I'd be happy to. I made this Nuck Tuck doll. Oh! <laughs> I mean, her demeanor is off, but that's cute. That's endearing. I would appreciate that. Someone made me a, a squeaky Alex doll. Hell yeah. I'd sign it. It has like sound effects and everything. Aww, it's actually really it's... good. Looks like a Funko Pop. Why didn't you tell me your friend was a mover star? <laughs> How do you not know? There's literally one mover in the world <laughs> and you don't know it. If you know what a mover is, then you know what Nuck Tuck is. Although it wouldn't surprise me if Barrack managed to scale this business a thousand fold in like two weeks. I thought stakeouts were supposed to be exciting. This isn't at all. So random story, I was a private investigator for like six months and 90% of it is stakeouts and it is extremely boring. It is like the most boring thing because you have to reserve 100% of your focus for like looking for the person. This is an accurate depiction of what stakeouts are, just looking, looking a lot. And then after that, some more looking. You can like listen to stuff, I guess, but it's incredibly tedious. But then when things actually happen, when you actually see what you need to see, it's like the most exciting thing ever in the world. It's the biggest adrenaline rush. Oh, I wonder if there's any snacks in here. Wait, I've seen that before. I've seen, I know what that is. Where did I see that? A pie show board. I'll play. No offense, but I learned street pie show from Shady Shin, and I am pretty good. I learned to play from my dad, the mm. diabolical genius. I can't help but wonder if the pie show thing is going to be related to the White Lotus, because I think in the first episode when Zaheer was free, he talked about bringing an end to the reign of the White Lotus. And the way I most know pie show is through Iroh, who was a member of the White Lotus. And it's a tile in pie show, right? Ladies first. I like how the animals are just watching. My money's on Asami. This game is all about slow, methodical strategy. No, it's not. This is a fast-paced, edge-of-your-seat game of chance. Don't think, just go. I don't know what Shady Shin taught you, but it wasn't the real Pai Show. The origins of Pai Show date back over 10,000 years. Right, so the, the fact that they're going into this so heavily, it's more than just like a side story. There's something important here, either plot-wise or thematically. It is a game of both strategy and chance. How can it be both? That's true of a lot of games. Each culture has its own rules and variations on the game. So like Monopoly and Uno. Cora, as the avatar, you need to standardize these pie show rules. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's really important. To -do list, right? right. After bringing back the Air Nation and taking down the group that tried to kidnap me. Yeah. That's cool, whenever you get to it. Best two out of three. Oh, come on! Best stakeout ever. 17 out of 33? Has he won at all? Any games? I can't believe it. 
You might actually win this one. Oh no, it's his first game. No, Pavu! <laughs> Why? Oh, I was gonna say on the plus side, at least you got to keep the doll, but. Well, at least you're not bored. I just saw him peeking out the window 15 minutes ago. It's in my logbook. He's really good at this. Cora, wait! You're gonna blow No, our that's not the plan. How are you gonna eavesdrop on them then? What if he was in the room right now? Oh my god. It's over, Iway. Where's What? Are they like astral projecting? Asami, those spirits were trying to tell us something earlier. It's in the spirit world. It's in the spirit world. Interesting. That also takes away a lot of their power. You told me we wouldn't have any problems getting the Avatar. Because of you, we've all been compromised. But you weren't counting on Pabu. He's the real hero. You left a loose end. I assure you, no one knows anything about us. No, you are the loose end. They're here! What did he just do? What effect does that have if you throw someone's spirit body off a cliff? So this is their first real head-to-head, -head, cause last time she kind of got knocked out real quick. He'll be spending eternity in the fog of lost souls, oh. which just leaves the two of us. Awesome, but they're not gonna fight. I mean, they're gonna talk it out. There's no need for aggression. Neither of us has our bending. I'll answer whatever questions you have. Yes. You deserve that much. Thank you. I feel like he's talking to me. We are part of a secret society dedicated to restoring freedom to the world, the Red Lotus. Red Lotus. But it doesn't explain why you tried to take me when I was a kid. That was Unalak's idea. What? Hmm. Avatar Korra. Misty Palms in. Wow. So he's in both worlds at once. We learned about Rava and Vatu and how Avatar One foolishly severed them. Hmm, interesting. All I wanted was to show the Avatar a better path for the world. Here's why I think he's such a captivating figure. We often think about people in terms of their actions, right? And like, if people do good things, or at least don't do bad things, then they're they're somehow good, right? But the truth of the matter is, most people's actions are not determined by their own values or their own critical thinking. Their actions are defined by the parameters of society. A lot of the time, the goodness you see in people, or the virtue you see in people, is actually a mask they're wearing to cover their own weakness. You know that saying, power corrupts? Sometimes I think that it's not power that corrupts, but the fact that we're already corrupted. Power just gives you the chance to act on it. It's a rare person who is the way they are because they want to be that way, rather than their behavior being dictated by external forces. And even though that's not often articulated, I think we all know that. And because of that, we're starved for people who actually have conviction and have arrived at values through critical critical thinking and are living those values without fear. And so even if you have someone who has a nefarious purpose, let's say, we can sense their, their resolve and that immediately puts them above people who are doing the right things for the wrong reasons. And that's why I think I respond so strongly to Zaheer and why he's such a compelling villain. And that's also why Tarlock and Amon fall apart, because when you follow their thoughts all the way to the end, you find out actually they're just selfish. Tarlock just wants power. Amon is just living out a grudge from his childhood. So here's the real deal. Oh, here they come. Oh, wow, they gotta defend her body. Water arm lady and lava guy found <gasps> us. Yeah. Come on, wake up! No, 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 leave her in there. Just gotta, you gotta take care of it. You guys are, are strong enough. And you got Naga. You got this. I believe in Mako and Bolin. So he betrayed you, just like he betrayed me. Yes. He allowed me and my friends to remain imprisoned while he pursued his own selfish goals. Right, and in his prison no less, right? One of them was in the Northern Water Tribe prison. The idea of having nations and governments is as foolish as keeping the human and spirit realms separate. You've had to deal with a moronic president and a tyrannical queen. Don't you think the world would be better off if leaders like them were eliminated? True freedom can only be achieved when oppressive governments are torn down. It will throw the world into chaos. Exactly. The natural order is disorder. Mmm. Do you know cool. who once said, new growth cannot exist without first the destruction of the old? Guru Lahima? The wise Guru Lahima. Lahima, damn it, I keep getting that wrong. Bender. Wow, that was an awesome conversation. One insight I think he has is that destruction and chaos is healthy and even essential for the growth and strength of a system. At an individual level, we need stressors, physical stressors to make us healthy. Exercise is in a way the destruction of muscles and they are built again stronger. Similarly, your immune system needs pathogens. If you sit in a sterile room your whole life, your immune system is not built and you're actually more vulnerable to pathogens. This also applies to species and is an essential part of natural selection. Death is part of the feedback process by which nature learns and strengthens itself. And there is also a natural selection for societies, right? 
right? Like some societies work better than others. One element in all these examples is failure is localized, meaning one node of the system can fail without taking the whole system down with it. It's like one ant dying will not affect the colony in any meaningful way. Putting this in more practical terms for society, the danger is when failure is not localized, meaning when there's one ruler that comes into power that suddenly has control over the outcome for the entire society. That creates a single point of failure that affects the entire system. And I think that's the argument against heavy centralized power. And I think that's part of the validity of Zahir's point. In order for things to be truly healthy and to grow in a manner harmonious with natural selection, decisions have to be more individual <laughs> and failure has to be more individual as well. But I think what he's not seeing is that him deciding to take this sweeping action does carry that risk of systemic failure. I'm not necessarily convinced that the Earth Queen isn't the result of natural societal processes. Like, isn't her reign in some way a choice by all of its citizens to tolerate her rule? Wasn't the president of Republic City elected? I think in many ways it was an individual-led, organic process by which they came to power. And I think the solution is not taking top-down actions that carry these systemic risks, but rather passing along the message that each individual is responsible or plays a role in the larger scheme of civilization, and therefore has a responsibility to live their best life in the best ways they can, and to define their own values through critical thinking to the best of their ability and then live in accordance with those values. I think ultimately that message goes farther in creating this robust state where the society is a collection of all its individuals rather than having one person, in this case it would be Zahir, taking sweeping action that would affect everything. Whew. Apologies for the long rant. Let's continue. <laughs> mm, he looks a little bit, a little bit outmatched. Both of them. You shouldn't have gotten in the water, I just realized. Just a water bender. When I awoke with airbending, I knew I would be the one to destroy the old world and plant seeds for a new world to flourish. As an airbender, you could help make a positive difference in the world instead of destroying it. You are a very smart young woman, Cora, but you must realize that once change begins, it cannot be stopped. Enough with your philosophical mumbo jumbo. I want to know one thing. If you do capture me, what are you gonna do with me? You'll have that answer soon enough. See you in the physical world. Wow. The guy knows how to make an impression. Oh, they got uh. her. <gasps> Zaheer didn't capture us. The Earth Queen's forces did. Where are we? Whoa. I'm not sure. They're taking us back to Ba Sing Se. <clears throat> we figured you could find a use for these two. We're taking a trip to Ba Sing Se. Wow, that episode was amazing. So now we have like three forces that are all gonna come together in Ba Sing Se. We got Team Avatar, we got Team Zaheer, and we have the Earth Queen and her forces. And the episode ends on such a dark note. Korra and Asami captured by one side, Mako and Bolin captured by the other. I can't wait to see how this all goes down. It's gonna be so much fun. But unfortunately, as short as that felt, this is the end of the episode. We're heading into the final stretch. I'll see you tomorrow for episode 10.